everybody, John Plaskina here, and there's been a lot of really depressing tech-related news recently. We've got Sony announcing that they're going to be recording and moderating voice chats on the PlayStation 4 and 5 and that there's no way to opt out of this feature. We've got Facebook revealing that you're going to need a Facebook account in good standing in order to use their Oculus VR products, which is kind of amazing. So this seems to mean that if you get banned from Facebook for something like questioning the government narrative about COVID-19 or for posting about QAnon, that could end up bricking your very expensive virtual reality toy. And of course, you already know that Google has been accused of rigging search results in the past. And recently, Project Veritas came out with a video where they've done some undercover work and got a high-level Google employee talking about ways that they could potentially interfere with an election and rig things in favor of left-wing progressive candidates. The Republican Party that wields that influence. So, like, what can be done in that realm? You can offer free credits, free advertising credits to uh, Democratic parties to advertise. You can uh, potentially you can uh, censor out news from your search engine. No, it's not their true. business to get involved, but they do. And but they do. people, the majority of trucks and safety is extremely left. Could they or would they get involved with our 2020 election? Yeah. By stopping for the financially stopping uh, right uh, right wing parties to from advertising. So and funnily enough about Brexit, I had a guy on LinkedIn, me, for no re I don't know why, contacting me say, Hi, I'm the head of digital infrastructure of the Conservative Party of the United Kingdom. We would like to uh, do advertising with Google. Could you, could you help me with that? <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't answer. Like you even mentioned that like, by saying that you don't totally hate Trump, that could be a problem at your work. Oh yeah, that totally could be. If I say that tomorrow, that I'm a Trump supporter, I'd probably lose my job. Really? Yeah. And I think it won't be direct, but indirectly it would become very, very hard for me to say that. Because they couldn't directly fire you, right? No, they couldn't. Like, nobody could do that. But I think it would be a very, very tough one. Because, you know, it's the peer pressure, it's the social pressure. Yeah. And then... Uh, you know, being a Trump supporter is, uh, you know, being a, a bad person. So the big question uh, on everybody's minds now is this Google antitrust lawsuit, the first step towards rolling some of this back and protecting us from big tech. I've, I've seen some people celebrating this. They're really excited. And I can understand that to a point, but... I don't see the censorship or political motivation even being part of the Google antitrust discussion. I've got some notes from what they're going to be talking about. And uh, the government is complaining about exclusionary agreements and anti-competitive conduct that Google used to become dominant in the search marketplace. They are talking about the practice of paying companies like Apple, LG, Motorola, and Mozilla to set Google as the default search engine. And there's a House Judiciary Subcommittee that found that Google lied about some acquisitions and other abuses of power that it used to maintain its position as, so as top search provider. So the, do government regulators and attorneys even care about Google's censorship of alternative point of view and the manipulation of public opinion? And I think the answer is no. They probably like it, love it, and want some more of it. And uh, even Republicans recently delayed the vote to subpoena Twitter and Facebook over political censorship. And what a bummer, because the Republicans at least make some noise about this. And Donald Trump had his executive order that was supposed to rein in some of this that appears to be totally toothless. But it seems like the actual antitrust case where we could see some kind of change. I don't think that free speech is going to be discussed at all, or if it is, it's going to be toothless. The the suit is really vague about what the government plans to actually do, what kind of relief they're going to seek. There's no specific mention about breaking up the company, but that is what most of the people in the media are discussing. So I actually think it probably would be a good idea to separate AdWords, which is Google's 
advertisement delivery platform and the largest advertising network on the internet, it's probably a good idea to separate that from the largest video sharing site and the largest search provider. All of these things are under control of the same set of boards of directors. But don't forget that any new company that's spun off from Google is ultimately going to be led by people who come from this same milieu, the big tech elite. And it's going to be guided by the same principles of Silicon Valley. It's, it's going to be more Twitters and Facebooks birthed into the world. Ultimately, the only way we're going to get real alternatives to big tech is by building up alt tech ourselves. So please take some time out of your day to follow me on BitChute and Gab and Minds and Odyssey and Parler. You'll find lots of people who have been banned from YouTube on those platforms. And, uh, you know, have, have a good time. Hang around, talk to everybody, and speak freely. That's all I got for today. It's a harsh world out there, my friends. Keep thinking. Bye-bye.